So we're going off to Ladin, uh, Anchorage. I put up the May and went to release the Genoa, and unfortunately, it's getting caught up around the four stage. So because we lowered the whole Genoa down a bit to give it a better set, and we managed to roll it up again just, but really we should have pulled the whole sail up to the top of the four stage and then fill it in. Because we didn't do that, it's getting caught unfurling it. I'm not sure what we're going to do with that. We might have to send Ivan up somehow to hold the tail, the, 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 the disc at the top, and stop it, stop the line twisting around the forestay as we release the sail. That could be tricky. It could be very tricky. It's not going to be ideal out of sea doing that. No, there's no way we're going to do that. We're going to as do the original plan, pull it back up again before we fill, fill it in, which is what we should have done the other day. But even that's not going to be ideal, is it? Oh, no, it's going to be better than this. This is really fun. It's really bumpy. I'm yeah. getting a bit nauseous. Yeah, I'm doing fine still. <laughs> Ivan has a bet that he thinks I'm going to throw up at least once during my time here, but I'm going to prove him wrong. I'm very calm. There will be no throwing up. It's our last day sailing around the tropical islands of the Seychelles, ironing out the wrinkles with our new second-hand tiny Genoa that was purchased here recently from a guy who had heard that we were in the market for a second-hand sail. Unfortunately, as it transpires, not only is this sale causing a few headaches, but also we may have received stolen goods, as the sale was not his to sell. But more of that later, because a weather window is looming which requires a sleek hull for maximum speed for our crossing to Tanzania, East Africa. The guys are all in the water. By guys I mean Rob, Ivan and Hannah. We're getting little barnacles growing on the hull. So they've all got in the water to get those off and our chain is also beginning to grow a kind of Fur. It got really bad in Thailand when we were anchored for two months in the same spot and I think it's the same stuff coming back. Yeah, so they're going to try and clean that off too and I feel slightly bad because I'm not in the water with them but someone's got to do the editing. I saw these guys come in this morning charter boat and it's interesting they came in quite close to us just uh, scouting around. I thought, oh, it's coming in pretty close, it's fine. I'm sure you'll just go off and it's a big anchorage. I just kind of forgot about them and then I looked up and they were right there, like right there, within less than five meters away. And, and it seemed fairly apparent that they had anchored because they were quite stationary. And so I just popped my head out and said, oh, good morning, and uh, had a bit of a chat. I, I didn't want to raise anything and they, then they asked the question, do you think this is okay here? I said, oh no, yeah, well, it's probably okay, but it might be a little bit risky and sort of, um, yeah, there's quite a big anchorage here and I sort of pointed out where the, the, the anchorage goes to and extends to and, um, and then he said his daughter's seasick and I said, oh well, you know, it's actually a lot smoother, should be a lot smoother up that end where it's more protection from the swell coming around. And I said, oh okay, we'd better pick up the anchor then. So that was a nice outcome. We're going to go over there. Okay, yeah. But it can happen easily, you know, you put the anchor down in one place and you try and, you, you do try and gauge where it's going to sit, fall back and and sometimes if there's current involved, uh, the true position of the anchor is not indicated because the current is swaying it away from where you think it might be and maybe there's a bit of that for him because we are in a wind versus current situation here at the moment. Uh, well that's quite, that's quite a nice ending to a, a nice little meeting with potential new neighbours but just perhaps a little bit cosier than we had uh, or they had perhaps realised it was going to get. So it's nice that it's shifted, or shifting, because it's a big anchorage, it's all good. They can find yeah. another place, no problem.
So, it would seem that we may have received stolen goods in the form of the Genoa, the Genoa that we cannot unfurl now. Just to go back a step or two, you may recall on our sale from Maldives to Seychelles, we blew out the Genoa. Now we could not get a replacement because it was very expensive and the time to get a new one here was just not going to work, so we had to get a second hand one. Prior to the one that's stuck up on the force day now, we had the Black Pearl. That just did not work, for obvious reasons, it was a shocker. So the man who informed us that this is potentially stolen goods has come to offer us another opportunity to buy a second hand Genoa. We don't think it's as big as our original, but it could do a better job than the one that's up here now. But now we have to get this one down, and that's a job normally for the EMC. Now Declan got the name EMC because when he was little, he helped out freeing up the diesel lines in Fiji that had got blocked. Would this be bad for you? Just have that sitting in your mouth. And we used him because one, he was competent, and two, he was small. Now, he's gone, and we need somebody competent and small to take his place. Yes, you could look at me, but I'm looking elsewhere. We have someone smaller and possibly even more competent. So Hannah has never done this before, but she's going to go up the mast and see if she can untwizzle the halid at the very top so we can get this Genoa, this bit of contraband, or I don't know, what would you call it? We're not supposed to have it. It's sold to us under false pretenses. But uh, we have to get that down. Yay! Well done. Oh, there you go. That was fun. Now you're a real uh, sailor. You've done some yakka on the boat. Well done. Good job. Oh. Good job. That was a beautiful view up there. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's nice. Yeah. We are back in business, baby. Yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> We've got a Genoa, an operational Genoa, and it's working like a dream. It's not quite as big, so there's definitely not going to be quite as much power coming out of it. Pushing us forward, but it's doing the job admirably, and it's going to be spot on for our next passage. Very, very happy. Uh, we're going to have to probably do a little bit of stitching on it. Actually, there's a few things coming away and I'd like to get some uh, ribbons put in as well, some indicator uh, thingy me jobs. Flipping good though. Oh, in fact now I reckon we should call it Phil. Because it's filled the gap perfectly. Filled the Genoa gap nicely. So I reckon we should call it Phil. What do you reckon? So it's first thing in the morning here. Dawn has broken. And what do you do when dawn's broken? You thick stuff on a boat and we've had a um, we've had water in both bilges just not much water and it's really difficult to track down where the leaks come when they're small somethings one of the leaks we feel has on starboard side has co is coming from this area here somewhere and so this morning we've pulled out all the pots and pans and this false floor here into this area underneath it wasn't actually why I pulled up the floor Robert this morning I pulled it up because oh, of the water pressure. Sorry, the third thing, you've got three things, two is two leaks, but the third thing is we've got bad pressure on our hot and cold water tap, fresh water. Nowhere else is the water pressure a problem. There's good pressure everywhere else in the boat. It seems to me that the problem could actually be in the mixer itself. Here we go. Yeah, go. You know, that's all the pressure. Yeah, turn off. Good pressure. Yeah. That was good yeah. pressure, yeah. Right. So this must be blocked, or could be, yeah. Corroded. Could maybe. be a number of things. Oh, wait. Yeah. 
So we gotta get new pipes then. No, it's just this part here that this part here somewhere is. No, well, no, you don't no, know this. No, because out of there was both of them were fine. Oh, okay, so it's in the tap. It's itself. just in this part from here, somewhere in here. No, something's it can't wrong. be from. It can't be from because it's both the male and the female. I doubt both of them will go at the same time. If the pressure's good coming to both of them, but it's bad coming out of both of them, because if you turn on the ma the hot it's oil and cold, it's something in here, mum, is broken. It's in the actual tap, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think it is. I see it in the yeah. start. Than in in the mixer. Yeah. And that's when Ivan discovered the little filter on the end of the faucet, which none of us had noticed before. Do all kitchen taps have filters? Ooh, look at how girly, gross that is. That could be the problem right here. Could be, yeah. It's just slowly blocked up over top. Yeah. The problem discovered. No wonder we have such strong immune systems. The filter was cleaned, the taps refitted, and the system tested. Whoa. No more water pressure problems for our up and coming sale. Next job, Hannah's volunteered for it. We've got a leaking salt water pipe that needs to be replaced. Now yeah. Hannah, you're doing some boat work here. Yeah. May I ask how come, why are you not wearing a bikini? <sighs> because Ivan has my bikini on. That attachment there is where the hose went into. We've already undone it, Hannah undid it. We've removed it and here it is. Pipe here, what I'm going to do is pull this back through up into the galley. This is going to lay this mouse in the, in the way so we can pull it back through the new hose, back through to here. So it's quite a long pipe actually. It's a really long pipe. Oh, and put the water in there. Um, well, I'm going to take this in now to Providence and see if I can get a replacement. Okay, so I've tied off the hose to the mouse. I'm going to ask Hannah, who's hanging here, to see if she can go and pull the other end down for me. Okay, Anna. Okay, nice. Just slow down a bit now. Okay, how's that going? Got it. <laughs> okay, so Hannah's in the bathroom doing up the hose clamp, so I'm going to go under the sink and do the same. I'm even going to put cable ties around the hoses. Wow, what do you know? Uh, Ivan's going to turn the seat cock and let's see how we go. <laughs> okay, let's give it a go. We've got Hannah on the switchboard ready to go. Let's give it a go. Go! Oh, look at load up. It's loading up. Oh, Mocha's interested in what's going on there. Oh, hang on. That's not good. It's on. It should be on. Tap is on. That's weird. Look at that. Sandy. Okay. How did sand get in there? Just turn it on again. Yeah. How would sand have gotten in there? I don't know. Alright, let's try that again. Oh. Hey! That's more better. Crikey. Okay. Perfect. Actually, just a little uh, story actually on naming the Genoa Phil. We've called the blue spinnaker Nigel and the Rolly Tasker spinnaker Rolly, as some of you may know. And we, we specifically mentioned that in our last episode. Uh, well, we had a commenter under that episode, a guy called Nigel Bliss. Now he said, my name's Nigel, but my nickname is Rolly. How's that? Well, that's one of the chances of that. I thought that was pretty cool. Thank you, Nigel, for that little bit of information.